and welcome back. So let's continue in this uh, section 5.1 with antiderivatives. So let's go over a little bit of notation first uh, before we really get into it. So when solving a differential equation of the form uh, dy dx equals f of x, it's really convenient to write it in the equivalent differential form. So all we're essentially doing is we're taking this dx and then we're just moving it over here uh, next to uh, f of x. And what that does is that separates your variables from one side to the other. So your y's are on the left and your x's are all on the right. So the operation of finding all solutions of this equation is called anti differentiation or indefinite integration and is denoted by an integral sign and the integral sign is that like tall skinny s looking thing and the general solution is denoted by this. So we have y equals, we're gonna put our integration symbol, and inside of there, you have some sort of a function. Followed by that dx. And that will equal capital F of X plus C. So this function that's inside the integral symbol, what that is, that is called the integrand and this DX thing, what that does, that its purpose is primarily to kind of tell you what the variable of integration is. So it's always going to be D something. So what the something, that's the variable of integration. And then your answer, whatever you get for that, that's your anti-derivative. Okay. So the expression the, uh, with that integral symbol of f of x dx, that is red. So if you're going to read this off, it's red as the indefinite integral of f of x with respect to x, which is quite a mouthful to say, but that's what it is. So again, this dx, it identifies the x in this case, because it's a dx, it identifies x as the variable of integration. So the key thing to remember about this, because we keep talking about antiderivatives, antiderivatives, and now all of a sudden we've got integrals in definite integrals are equal to antiderivatives. They're, they're one and the same. So when you say one of them, you're implying the other. Okay, so in essence, integration and differentiation are inverses of each other because they one of them goes one direction and the other one just reverses it so you can see that in two different ways so like if you integrated the derivative of a function you should get the original function but because you're integrating you've got that that plus c at the end of it well if you switch the order if you did the derivative of the integral of, of a function, you should get right back to the same function. 
So in this box, what we have are just a bunch of basic integration rules from just everything that we've done before. So we're just working our way backwards. Uh, so I'll leave it to you guys to kind of take a look at this. The ones I will highlight some that seem to be commonly missed, not because they're hard, it's just because people leave things out. That would be number seven. The integral of sine is negative cosine. And what people want to do is they want to leave the negative off. So just watch out for that. And then the other one that seems to trip people up is number 14. This little guy right here. And the thing that messes that up is they want to do a derivative of this instead of integrating it into ln of the absolute value of x. And the other thing that trips them up is they want to leave off the absolute value bars. Okay, in the next video, we'll go ahead and uh, practice some of these integration rules out.